What's up YouTube? I know many of you may be new to the channel courtesy of Brad Owen's previous video. I really want to send my appreciation to him. I hope you guys enjoy what's to come on the channel. Many of you may know this, but for the previous month I did the one chip challenge where I had to put up to 10 videos in order to avoid having to eat this bad boy. For this next month, what I'll be doing is leaving it in your hands. If we can get a video up to 20,000 views or a thousand likes, then I'll be making a video of me eating this. And I hear it's pretty brutal. All right guys, thanks very much and uh, let's get to those hand histories. In the first interesting hand to note, there is a limp under the gun. I pick up ace, king, offsuit in late position and open to 25, which is going to be my standard open versus one limp in this 3-5 game, given the rate considerations. He calls and we go heads up to a flop, which comes 10-9-4 rainbow. He checks, and now I continue with a down bet of $20, targeting his ace highs, as well as some of his straight draws like queen jack, king jack, king queen. He check calls, and we go heads up to a turn, which is the offsuit 5. He now checks at this point. I think that I'm just going to be checking back, trying to get to showdown. The river comes out in offsuit seven. Jack eight gets there. And after a little bit of consideration, he checks. I'm going to check it down, try to get to showdown, like I said. And he tables king jack for the missed gut shot. I think if he actually leads this river, then I might be finding a call, as I do beat hands like queen jack and king jack. And I'm not exactly sure what he would be betting for value, except for maybe some good tens like ace 10 or king 10, as I expect many pairs to just check and try to get to showdown. Uh, and so we scoop this one, and uh, we're off to a good start. After picking up that small pot with Ace King, I unfortunately go pretty card dead, which of course is going to happen playing live no limit hold'em, and something that I really took for granted having played online over the last year. Here we pick up the Deuce of Diamonds, fold, of course next up, we're going to have to catch the Deuce of Spades, and another fold, and now the Deuce of Hearts, beginning to feel like I'm playing Pokemon and we got to catch them all. Now comes the Deuce of Clubs. Just kidding, guys. We have 8-6 suited. After a couple of limps, I decided to limp along as well on the button as I had to read that the early position limper limped strong. Now the small blind jams all in for about $400. He is a reg that I am familiar with and whose game I respect, although I'd never let him know that. He did lose a pretty sizable pot recently, so I think he might be tilting. Now the early position limper, who I thought was limping strong, goes into the tank, confirming my suspicions. He eventually finds a fold, and now the player to my right folds as well, showing the ace of spades. I end up making a joke to the uh, the guy who I'm familiar with, let him know I've at 8-6 suited, and I might make a light call if he shows me a card. He then shows the five of clubs, confirming he of course is jamming pretty light, although I expect it's going to be some hands like ace five, maybe pocket fives, so we do fold. After that all in jam, he had another one where he showed a four, and now we have the fourth or fifth one of his, where there's a limp, a raise, and now he jams pocket threes. The limper ends up re-jamming, the opener has ace king and calls it off, and we get the old 3-5-5 five, five flop for the three-way all-in, so my buddy flops the threes full. The guy who ended up limp jamming has pocket jacks and holds against the ace king. And uh, my buddy on the left gets a nice little triple up to about $1,300. Uh, I guess a little bit of patience and wild play eventually pays off. Don't try this at home, kids. I finally pick up a playable hand in the small blind. Pocket threes. There's an open to $25 from a reg who I perceive as good. Obviously the sizing is a little bit large, but I'm going to continue with the call as I expect that I'm going to derive a lot of my value here in flopped sets. We are $1,000 deep. We go heads up to a flop, which comes king, queen, three, Yahtzee, flop from bottom set. I decide to check, obviously remaining in game flow. After a little bit of thought, he bets $20. I think versus this sizing, we have a clear just call, as I don't expect him to be able to continue with many hands other than perhaps ace, king, aces, or sets. The turn is an offsuit to 10. I check. And now he goes into the tank. Uh, this is a board where, obviously, I have a very good hand. But if he continues large, we're going to have to proceed with caution as we do now lose to ace-jack, jack-nine, as well as the sets. He decides to check it back. The river is now in offsuit eight. And I think he's going to be pretty capped here. He, possibly to some two-pair hands like king-ten, queen-ten. I expect if he had a straight, he would be betting the turn. And so I'm going to be polarizing here, trying to get value from his kings, as well as perhaps some stubborn hands like ace-queen, maybe even queen-jack. I size up, as I said, to $70. Looking back at the hand, I really don't like my river sizing. As I had said previously, I expect his hands here to be capped to one pair holdings, such as ace-queen, queen-jack, maybe even king-jack. And so when we bet this large, we're really limiting the type of hands that are going to be calling us. If he had two pair, I think he's still going to be betting this turn sometimes. So something more in the lines of one-third to half pot, I think are much more likely to get called. Also, I think this hand is a great example of the power of position, as well as the effectiveness of the use of the down bet on the flop. 
As the preflop aggressor, he gets to use his range advantage on this board to bet small and get folds from my weakest hands as well as some wide continues. Facing a call, he can now decide whether to check back the turn with all his middling strength hands that want to get to showdown or bet for value. Now on the river, once I bet large, he gets to make an educated decision on whether he should call versus this sizing. Coupled with the knowledge of what he perceives my small blind calling range to be, he has a wealth of information on how best to proceed. Despite flopping a huge hand, I end up playing a small pot where the in-position player has the clear advantage. In this next interesting hand of note, there is an open to 15 under the gun. The player to my right calls with pocket sixes. I'm going to be flatting here as well, hoping to flop a set multi-way. The player in the cutoff calls, the small blind calls, and the big blind calls 10 more. We go six ways to a flop which comes 5-3-3 three, three with two spades. Given that I didn't flop a set, this is probably just about the next best thing possible. Now the blinds check, the pre-flop opener checks as well, the player to my right checks, and now that I do have a over pair, this is about as good a situation as I can hope for. I'm going to be betting for equity denial as well as protection. I don't think we have to be going particularly large. I bet 45 into the $90 pot. The player behind folds with the action now on the small blind. He tanks for a bit and eventually makes the call. When he calls here, I think he's going to have some flush draws, some straight draws, although I do block those, as well as maybe some over pairs. The other players all fold, and we go heads up to a turn, which is the queen of hearts, bringing a second flush draw. He checks, and after some thought, I think this is a spot that's way too thin to be betting. I'm again, once again, trying to get to showdown, hoping that no flush gets there. I check it back, and the river ends up coming a four. He now thinks for a bit and shakily bets $50. Given that I am getting over 4.5 to 1 and enough draws have missed, I think this is a spot that I can profitably call. I make the call and he announces straight. I wait for a bit and he finally tables 4-5, which is actually 2 pair. 2 pair that I can beat with my 6s up. I'm not sure if he was trying to angle me or what he was doing here. I eventually table my hand to scoop the pot. I think there's a couple of things we can learn from this situation. The first is, math is important. Getting over 4.5 to 1 here means that I only have to be right about 18% of the time. Oftentimes, people just have really no idea why they're betting. In the situation where enough draws have missed and you're getting a great price, it's likely a profitable call. Also, when someone tells you they have a specific hand, you should just always wait. Wait until they table their hand because, you know, if I listened to him and believe that he did in fact have a straight, I could have just mucked and then he would have won. So it's always best to hold on to your hand until you could actually see what they have. Now it folds to us in the small blind, and we have a razor fold situation because of the rake consideration. The big blind does not chop. I look down at 6-5 offsuit and make it $20. Now the big blind lets us know of his displeasure with the middle finger. He folds. I only bring this hand up to illustrate the importance of not limping in late position in situations where casinos take a large percentage of the pot. Now in this hand, it folds to me in the cutoff. I have king, nine, and diamonds, which is going to be a fairly standard open for me. I make it $20. Now the button who is the regular who I've been mixing it up with, flats. I think when he calls here, he's going to have a fairly wide range of suited connectors, gap connectors, ASEX hands, as well as some Broadway holdings. We go heads up to a flop, which comes king, jack, six with two clubs. This is a pretty standard C bet for me, but I decided to check it up to mix it up. Now he quickly bets $30, flopping top pair. Obviously, I'm not going to be going anywhere, and I decided to check call. When he bets here, I expect him to do it pretty wide, given the fact that I've checked we now go heads up to a turn, which comes in offsuit to 10. Queen 9 and ace queen both get there. I continue with the check once again. And now he pretty quickly checks it back. At this point, I think I have the best hand. We go heads up to a river, which is a 6, pairing the bottom card. Given that all the draws have missed and I just have top pair, I think it's a pretty good spot for me to check call, allow him to bluff off with his hands, as I don't expect him to be able to call with worse. He now pretty quickly bets $75, verbalizing with a $100 chip. I think we now have a pretty clear check call as I have underrepped the strength of my hand. All the draws have missed and he is a capable opponent. I make the call and we get shown the A6 of diamonds for flopping bottom pair and rivering trips. I think if I actually play this as a C bet on the flop, he likely will call. I'm going to probably check the turn and he gets there on the river either way. Unfortunately for me, he gets a pretty favorable disguise river and gets to take me to value town. Now for the final interesting hand of note, I opened $20 with ace, eight of clubs under the gun in a five-handed game with a few people walking. The small blind calls, and we go heads up to a flop, which comes six, five, three with two clubs. He now donks into me for $30 with 115 behind. Flopping enough flush draw, I jam. He snaps it off with pocket jacks, and we're off to the races. I need to hit an ace or a club. The turn is an eight, making me top pair. The river's a brick, and unfortunately, we cannot beat the pocket jacks. And just kind of an unlucky spot where we lose a flip, and I don't think I'd be opening if we weren't five-handed.
We once again fall victim to the variance of only being able to play short sessions as my son is completing out the school year and has to be picked up pretty early. In this hand, I pick up ace queen, call a raise from an early position raiser, and end up whiffing a flop and having to fold. And that's pretty much the last of the session as I pick up king seven of diamonds under the gun and have to call it a day. Unfortunately, we ended up booking a $495 loser and we'll have to be back at it the next day. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video.